What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey, hey, everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight. Tonight! All right, we're coming back to In Flames. Yes, indeed. In Flames fans, feeling you. Come on now. Here we go. Before we go any further, for those of you who are feeling inclined doing all of the clicks and the likes and the bibbity bibbity bop, do me a favor before you do all that stuff. Please watch the whole video first, okay? Give me a chance to actually earn those clicks and likes. Now, after the video's done, if you still feel like doing all those clicks and likes, then by all means, feel free to click away. This comes as a request from Lena, and it was also the winner of the Patreon request prioritization poll, winning with 51% of the vote. Moving it for number 983 in the queue, Straight up to number one. So yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, your voice, your vote does matter. They all want to see me react to this. It is In Flames with a song entitled Where the Dead Ships Dwell. Now, have I heard this song before? No, I have not. To the best of my knowledge, this does not resonate with me in any way, shape, or form. However, there's always a possibility I may have heard the song in passing and I just don't realize it. So as always, if I start listening to the song and I suddenly go, Wait a second. This sounds really familiar. I'll let you know. That's the truth. You know me, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This was posted by Frozen Metal, okay? And the video has 21,000 views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the video description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say, are you ready? Are you ready? Cause here we go. All right, here we go. In flames, where the dead ships dwell lives. So we got a live performance here, awesome. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. This is your crowd surfing here to boy. Can't see the band. Turn off the blood. Put a spotlight on. Crowd jumping like that. I like the chorus. I like the chordal progression in the chorus. Down to the minor six, down to the four, down to the minor three, up to the minor seven. Never going back to the root, repeating again. Minor six, minor four, minor three, back up to the seven. Keep building that sense of anticipation and then resolving on the root. I like it. I like that chordal progression. It sounds good. 
It, it feels good. I like the anticipation that going up to the seven without resolving on the eight builds the first time through it. I like that a lot. Um, the thickness, the heaviness, it's all there. The crunchy guitar tone, love that. I love the fact that the bass player is carrying uh, the melodics through the verses. I mean, the guitars will come in in like, like, the, in like the, the third quarter of each verse, but for the most part, it's the bass player. I love that. Bass has got a nice tone too. A very pronounced attack. Uh, got a lot of highs in his mix, but has the bottom end though. You still get the rumble. So he's got a really nice smile curve working for him in his EQ. Um, as far as the live performance goes, if I'm not mistaken, they've checked off all five boxes already. Stage presence, yep. Stage energy, yep. Stage interaction, yep, saw that. Crowd interaction, I've seen that. Showmanship, yep. Okay, so they've already checked off all five boxes. Now, here's the thing. Can they keep rechecking them? Can they keep sharpening the saw? Or did they blow themselves out in the first minute and a half and we're not gonna see anything else for the rest of the song. I hope that's not the case. I mean, even if it is, they did manage to check off all five, but if they keep resharpening the saw, they keep going back and doing even more crowd interaction, even more stage interaction, even more stage energy, even more showmanship, then their stock is going to just continue to increase, which means a higher score at the end of the day. So we'll see. We'll see. I really hope they do. Um, let me back up a little bit. Let, let's keep going here. Ending on the uh, 
and a four you know hmm. it's abrupt i'll bet i'll bet you anything on the studio version it's number one it's probably the ending is probably a lot cleaner uh than in a live setting because they can edit it and you know clean it up um uh, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a you know, they can they could obviously, you know, edit it, any bleed over out and make it very abrupt. Where with the live version, unfortunately, we don't have that and we we had some bleed over from reverb and you know, a little little carryover. So not quite as clean as it probably is on the studio recording. Um in a live setting, I, I don't know, I feel like a missed opportunity was there. Hitting that Funding you into two e into three e into four e and, and just forget about ending on the uh just one e into two e into three e and a four e and a one and just end on that just hard sustained chord downbeat just just the root chord man that just wow and just let it sustain and let it hold drums you know filling going crazy big rock and roll ending. I, and especially, I don't know if this is the last song of the set or not. It looks like it could be. I saw the house lights come up. So this could be the last song of the set. Kind of an anticlimactic ending. Unless, unless this was the last song. They all leave. You know, the crowd starts making a whole bunch of noise. 30 seconds later, they come back out for encores. You know, that's also a possibility. Now, if that's the case... Having that sudden ending on the uh of four uh, actually kind of makes sense. It does make sense. But if this is the actual last song, eh, kind of a missed opportunity. Anyway, um, let me get my thoughts together. I'll see you in the review, and we'll talk about it. Well, there you go, folks. That was In Flames with a live performance of Where the Dead Ships Dwell. This was a request from Lena. And it was also the winner of the Patreon Request Partization Poll, winning with 51% of the vote. Moving up from number 983 in the queue, straight up to number one. So yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, your voice, your vote does matter. Okay, um, I have a score here. It's going to require a little explanation, but I, I promise you, if you hear me out, by the time I'm done, you all, you all are going to be like, oh, that makes sense. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So let's get to the score. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give that a 7.8. Yep, 7.8. I feel good about that score. Let me tell you why. Why? Okay, first things first. A 7.8. What does that mean? Well, a 7.8 would translate to a really good scale rating. So overall, I think this was a really good job. It would get four to five stars and a B plus letter grade. So there you go, 7.8, really good skill rating, four to five stars and a B plus letter grade. Now, how did I come up with that score? <laughs> so glad you asked. Okay, as a song, just the song on its own. I think it's a really good song. I, I do think it's a really good song. It's got a really nice chorus. The chorus is the hook. For me, without question, the chorus is the hook. I love that chordal progression. Starting with the six, the minor six, going down to the four, to the minor three, up to the minor seven, without resolving to the root, goes right back and repeats. Minor six, down to the four, down to the minor three, up to the minor seven, and then we resolve back to the root. That anticipation build, I love that. I really do. It it absolutely worked. It's very effective. It's a catchy, it's a catchy, hooky chorus, and that's what you want. When it comes to a song, you want something within the song to grab you. You want something within the song to hook you that puts its melody in your head, puts that chordal pattern in your head, and you're not gonna be able to get it out with a crowbar for about a week or two. That's what you want. If you can do that with your songwriting, you're good to go. Um, And they definitely did it. Now the chorus was definitely the strong point. The verse, on the other hand, uh. I love the fact that the bass player took the reins for the first half. I love the fact that the first half of each verse was the bass player carrying the load. And then for the second half of the verse, the guitars came in with him to re just with that downward, the downward chunk. Very nice, 
very chunky, very heavy. Guitar tone plays a big part in that because too much crunch, too much distortion will end up making the guitar tone muddy, at which point hearing any attack whatsoever is gonna be pretty much impossible and you're gonna get a ton of bleed over. Now they had really good distortion selection. Their, their, their tone selection for the guitars was really spot on with the song. You got the thickness, you got the fullness, you got the chunkiness, but you still had enough articulation. It wasn't so heavy that it bled and got muddy. You could hear every single attack cleanly. So it sounded clean as a result. Um, but what the guitars were playing, honestly, not mind blowing. It, it Rhythmically, it was nice, but quarterly, it was all on one chord for the most part. I mean, it, it really was. So I'm not gonna sit here and blow things out of proportion and go, oh my God, it was mind blowing. No, no. The verse was the easiest part of the whole song. Um, I think vocally, his vocal style definitely fit the style of the song. He definitely had the gravelly voice, but you could hear pitch in there. There was pitch. Um, and you didn't have to look very hard for it either. It was, it was there, it was clear as day. Um, I think the vocal style fit the song, absolutely. Would I say I was impressed by it? Mm, not really. It, it's not anything mind-blowing. You've heard other vocalists do it just like he did a hundred times before. So I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like it's mind-blowing because it, it isn't. It, it, he did it well, absolutely. Um, no, from a songwriting standpoint, and, and the drumming, the drumming, the drumming. Uh, drumming was nice, drumming was tight. Everything that I heard fit like a glove. He had some nice fill work. Um, when they were playing syncopated, guitars, bass, playing in syncopation with each other, he had a really nice pattern back there that accented and supported what was happening within the guitars and bass. So everything he did was very tasteful, very well done, very solid, okay? Songwriting, honestly, the song on its own, I would give it about 7.2, 7.3. Okay, it's, it's a really good song, it is. So why am I giving this a 7.8 then? If I only if I only think the song deserves a 7.2, 7.3, somewhere in there, why am I giving it a 7.8? I have said this time and time again on the channel. A live show can help your score, or it can hurt your score. In this case, it helped. It helped a bit. Uh, it, it jumped at a whole like 0 0.5, 0 0.6. So I mean that that is a it's a pretty significant jump. Um, it could have been higher. It could have been higher. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about what I mean by that. Uh, let, let's get into it. First of all, did they check off every single box? Let's let's go on the list. Stage presence. Yep. Check. They came out looking like rock stars. They did not look like roadies. They didn't just wander on the stage looking like they were lost little lambs. Oh, they came out and they owned the stage. Stage presence was definitely there. Stage energy. Check. I am gonna I am gonna give it a check. The first half, the first half of the song, we saw a lot of it. We saw a lot of stage energy. People moving around, crisscrossing, passing each other. And that was nice. We saw a lot of movement and motion on the stage for the first half. Second half, it kind of disappeared. Everybody kind of found a spot and stayed within that spot. Now within that spot, they would move around in their, in their little five by five box. They would move around a little bit, but they wouldn't move around like they were before where they were actually moving to different parts of the stage. So I am gonna give them the check. I wish I had seen more. I wish they had sharpened that saw a little bit more, but they did sharpen it. So they did hit the point, so they do get it. Stage interaction. Yeah, I'm gonna give them the check. I saw that one instance <laughs> where the two guitars, you know, the two guitar players came together and were playing to each other behind the behind the vocalist. That is stage interaction. So they did get the point. It would have been nice if we had seen more of it throughout the performance. You know, maybe one of the guitar players could interact with the bass player. Maybe one of the guitar players go back and interact with the drummer. Maybe the bass player come over and interact with the, with the, with the vocalist, something. We got one, so we did get the check, but unfortunately we didn't, again, we didn't go back and sharpen the saw on that one. So it does get the check, but it's only for one time. Crowd interaction, uh, yes, check. And I'm, I'm even gonna say that they did sharpen the saw on that one, the vocalist in particular. Uh, there were a number of times, again, it's something about the first half. First half of the song, I saw a number of times. Bass player interacted with the crowd. I saw one of the guitar players interact with the crowd. The guitar player over on stage right. I saw him interact with the crowd. Vocalist was constantly interacting with the crowd. Second half, it was only the lead vocalist. Now listen, if anybody's gonna do it, it should be the lead vocalist. He's the front man. It's kind of his job to interact with the crowd and put on the, put on the show as much as possible. 
So he did it. He did it very subtly, you know, leering into the crowd. I didn't see him point, but I did see him leer into the crowd, put up on the on the monitor, leering into the crowd. Okay, I saw it. It's there. He did sharpen the saw, yes. Could have done more, yeah, maybe, but at least he did it. Would have been nice if the other guys on the stage had done it as well, since they did it in the first half. Why weren't they doing it in the second half? I don't know. But in any case, we did have it, and it was resharpened constantly. So there was that. Showmanship, yes, check. It was definitely there. Like I said, they, they in the second half, they kind of got into their own little five foot by five foot box. So they didn't really move around a whole lot. But within that five foot box, they each did, you know, they were doing the deep waist head banging, um, putting, on, putting on the best show that they possibly could. So I, I'm going to give it to them. And I'm, I'll, I'll say they resharpened the saw on that one, yes. Uh, let me see, what else there? Production, um, not really. But like I've always said, when it comes to production, unless you're a production-based band and you need production to put on your show because you just stand there like a bunch of statues and you don't move and you need all that pyro and cryo to put on the visual spectacle, unless you're a production-based band like that, production's bonus points. Did they have any production? Their lighting, their lighting was well designed. I will say their lighting was very effective. It was very well designed. So, um, it looked good. Good color selection. Good, good, good rotation of patterns. Um, now, I, I, I like the light show. I thought the light show was pretty good. That was the only. That was the only production though. So it wasn't like they had cryo and pyro and squibs and everything else going off. But that's okay. You don't need it if you're not a performance-based band. You don't need it. It's just bonus points. But taking everything into account from the live show, this is how it came up to a 7.8. It came up quite a bit. If we had seen a little more stage interaction and a little more stage energy uh, and a little more crowd interaction from everybody else on stage besides the front man, their stock would have gone up even higher. And we could have ended up in the eights. We, we very well could have. Uh, but for the song on its own, no, nah, 7.2, 7.3 is where we're staying with the song. But the live show definitely had it, and that's how we're coming up to that 7.8. So I feel good about that score, and that's where we're going to stay. So let's wrap everything up here in a nice shiny bow, shall we? We got a 7.8, which is a really good scale rating, 4 to 5 stars, and a B-plus letter grade. Take your pick. I don't care. Whichever one of those floats your boat. Final word, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you guys feel like joining the fan base, go ahead and click on that button down there. If you guys want to like the video, go ahead and like the video. If you guys want to ring the bell, go ahead and ring the bell. It honestly doesn't make any difference at all to me, but if you guys feel like doing these things, well then by all means, feel free to do so. Well, that's gonna do it for tonight, folks. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later, peace.